Ahoy there, it's Castaway Key Day. Kay? I thought it was Key. Uh, it's Mickey's Private Island. Yeah. Hey there, man fam. It is day three on the Disney Magic, and we are spending it at Castaway Key. Today we are going to swim with some stingrays, check out the barbecue on this beautiful, beautiful island. But first, coffee. Yeah, but not just any coffee. It's room service coffee with this view. One of my favorite things to do on Disney Cruise Line is order room service for breakfast, which is totally included with your cruise fee. Uh, it's a lighter breakfast, pastries, cereals, juice, coffee. You set the little door hanger out before 3 a.m. and just check what you'd like, uh, when you'd like it to arrive, and it does. It's magic. And then you get to eat your breakfast and look at this, and it's stunning. Note room service is available throughout all the meals. You can even get Mickey bars delivered to your room. It is the height of luxury. As Molly mentioned, we are going swimming with stingrays later, so we wanted to go with something a bit light. So we got our fresh fruit, some croissant, uh, uh, the accoutrement for the croissant, we have some jam, jelly, cream cheese, and then uh, guess who got which cereal? We have Kellogg's Raisin Bran and Fruit Loops. Yeah. Listen, Bran is good. Okay, Grandpa. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, well, we just made it off the ship. Now keep in mind, when you exit the ship, everybody in your party will need their key to the world card, and if you are an adult, you will need a form of ID, either a driver's license or your passport. So just keep that in mind when you're exiting the ship. Goofy's here. Look oh, how yeah. cute he is in his little swim outfit. Oh, Aww. rocking a two-piece. Oh, with style and flair. <laughs> Let's say hi. Hi, Goofy! You look so cute. You ready to swim? Yeah? What do you keep in your fanny pack? Stuff for the beach? Oh, right, we'll get you in. <laughs> Thanks, Goof. <laughs> Two, please. Thank you. <laughs> So they'll hand you towels when you get off. You don't have to bring it with you. You know what I love about this walk up on Castaway Key? That there are references to a bunch of the leaders and executives of the organization. I mean, right here we've got tomorrow, but I'm curious. <laughs> the last time we were on this island, uh, Mr. Chapek was still in charge. I'm going to tell you, I already know. Yeah. I, he, I, he lost his charge. I can't imagine that's still there. No, it's not. It's not. And there's Donald too, but we have an excursion to get to. Look how pretty the ship is. Oh, you never know. She was the first of the fleet. She's a beaut. Actually, you would by how small it is. It takes like four seconds to get across the whole thing compared to the wish or the dream, which is nice, actually. I like it. And there he is, Captain Bob Iger. They wasted no time. Quality, reliability. <laughs> Question, do you think they just got the old one and put it back out, or do you think they repainted it, or do you, best case, think they painted over the last name and repainted this name? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to go with they probably brought back out his old one after a yeah. refurb. They but dusted it off. They were like, they gave it a little kiss of love. And they were like, you can go back up here now. Up here you are. While it is a short walk to Scuttles Cove and Castaway Family Beach from the ship where you dock, there are shuttles available if you would like to take those to Scuttles Cove and Castaway Beach. In order to get to Serenity Bay, which is the adult beach, you'll have to take another tram, which is further up. Plus, you can do some sightseeing, and by that I mean you can drive down the former airplane runway because this island used to be used to transport um, illicit substances, goods, and yeah, yours goods. is better. Yours is better. It used to be goods that may or may not have been legal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, it really does feel like you are on the uh, plane runway from Jurassic Park Three. Yeah. You know that part when the Spinosaurus comes out and the guy's like, please stop the plane, please. They don't stop the plane, he gets eaten. Spoiler alert. Anyway, look at the beautiful island. <laughs> Hi, Mickey, you're so cute. <laughs> How are you? I see your queen over there. She looks beautiful as always, yeah. <laughs> Come on. 
We've made it to Scuttles Cove. We were greeted by Mickey, who then swapped out with Minnie, and they're so cute on their little Jeeps, and then they kiss each other's noses. Yeah, the little transition that was so cute. And then we got to take our picture with the famous Mount Rustmore, which has been painted beautifully for the 25th. It did look rather stunning. And now we're headed to the Castaway Rays Stingray Adventure. This is one of the mini port adventures you can do here on Castaway Key. Uh, you can also go parasailing, banana boats, you can rent private cabanas, or you can just have a great day at the beach, which if you do want to come to the family beach, I recommend getting here early because chairs do fill up quick. Uh, but I'm excited to see some stingrays. Alan, please demonstrate this, the stingray shuffle. You can't step. You can't pick up your feet. You gotta, you gotta shuffle, shuffle so you don't brain. step on a stingray because that would hurt them, not us. And here we have the influencer in the wild, in the wild. She searches the ocean for stingrays, missing the one that is clearly directly below her. It would seem that after spending 15 minutes with the stingray, she believes she is something referred to as a stingray whisperer. Oh, she has located one. What an interesting experience. Let us observe as a stingray brushes themselves up against my leg. Rather unsettling, but I'm fine with it because they're very kind, these stingrays. Back to the influencer. We shall shuffle our way in her direction. Look at her as she so lithely makes her way through the waves, cutting with agility of an Olympic swimmer. Ah, she has attempted to swallow the water and found it quite habitable, interesting, and amazing. Fun. That was really cool. The feeding part of it, I think, was what surprised me most because they just slide right up and take the food and you get to pet them. They and, feel weird. And they are fed on Mickey dinner plates, so they are very fancy stingrays. They, uh, they've learned that the Mickey dinner plate means there's food Snack. there. So smart. It's like a big underwater doggo. Except it's more like a big underwater sharko because sharks and rays are related. Okay, big underwater shark I did ask the cast member if there would be any sharks, and they said, no, don't worry. And I was like, no, 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 I, I want there to be sharks. So, could you call them, maybe? Like, like I'm sure most people that asked are scared. No, I would like them. But if I can't feed a shark, I'm happy to feed a ray. And then we got to snorkel with them for like 30, 40 minutes, and it was awesome. They were so pretty. <sighs> and we met Barry the Barracuda. He was very chill, very sure, chill. Barry. Mr. Ray's snorkeling experience is $56 for adults, and it's about an hour long. There's several times you can reserve in the morning. The experience started with a short educational seminar about the rays, about what you're gonna do. Then you get to feed the rays, and then you get to snorkel with them. And it was really, really fun. It was cool. And what's really cool is we learned that the cast members who take care of the rays stay on the island full time, so they are in constant care. Also worth noting that the rays don't have to get fed. It's not a guarantee that the rays will come up and swim up to get the food. Um, they're of course lured by the Mickey plate to get food, but they are completely in control of their own destiny. So they may not come up to you, but they, we, they did for us all three times. Very exciting. Yeah. They're living their best lives. And now let's live our best lives on the adult beach. Yes, I'm hungry. Hopping into the shop though, prior to the beach, they've got a couple different little places where you can get merch, but this is the biggest one. Are these ears? Oh my gosh. They're little inflatable beach balls. Stop. That is so cute. Of course, there's a wide variety of tropical inspired Castaway Key t-shirts. And one thing to know is that you cannot get this stuff, a lot of this stuff that you're seeing on the ship. It's Castaway Key exclusive down to the reusable bags that they sell here with your stuff. So if you want anything, you need to grab it before you get back on the boat. Should I get this even if I didn't do it? No one would know you didn't do it. I yeah. definitely did it. Yeah, no, there's no law that says you can't just buy the merchandise and pretend you did it. A couple other notable items. They have an exclusive Castaway Key Spear jersey. I've also never seen this lounge fly anywhere, which makes me think it's a Castaway Key one. It's Mickey and Minnie with their little sunglasses and flower. It's so cute. Do I need a lounge fly? Also worth mentioning that they do have things like goggles and sunscreen, disposable cameras, little swimmers, swim diapers, sunglasses, hats, swimsuits, flip-flops. So basically anything you need for the beach, if you forgot it or need more, they've got you covered. 
But for now, I need to go to Serenity Bay. Yes, please. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. I'm hungry, mother. I'm hungry, mother. Cruising through. This is Cookies 1, the first of the dining locations on the family beach. There's also Cookies 2. Also have the conked out bar right here. This is where you can get frozen beverages and cocktails. Got a couple signature drinks here on the island. There's Jeff Bali, president of Walt Disney World's nod. As we pass the beach here, I must know, would you rather do the Stingray experience we just did or the Castaway Key snorkeling that we did uh, on a previous cruise? Oh, interesting question. Uh, the Castaway Key snorkeling experience, for those of you who don't know, is something you can do on the family beach, and it is a snorkeling experience that has a number of Disney hidden gems within the snorkeling area. I think I'd go with the snorkeling here. Yeah, me too. As cool as the Stingray experience was, it, you can feed Stingrays other places. And it's so cool to be looking for fish and diving under the water and seeing like a Dumbo vehicle or a Prince Eric statue. The snorkeling is just like very uniquely Disney and feels perfect for Castaway Key. So check that out if you haven't been to the island. And right by the tram to Serenity Bay, you have Summertime Freeze featuring Olaf's favorite blends, which is a number of freezes and slushies that you can nab for an extra cost. You also have a small shop here by the seashore. <laughs> oh wait, I get it, because that other one was seashells, and then that one was seashells, seashells, and just... By the seashore, yeah. Hilarious. Uh, but more importantly than any of that, our tram has arrived. I guess we're rope dropping lunch here. Absolutely. <laughs> at the Serenity Bay barbecue. This is the same menu that you're gonna see over at Cookies and Cookies 2 on the family beach. It's gonna be barbecue, burgers, but because it's at the adults only beach, they add a couple other things, usually some kind of carving station, some extra desserts. There's all you can eat soft serve. Let's get to it. It's a dream. complete at the Serenity Bay barbecue. I don't want to call myself a genius, but one, I got the steak instead of the burger and made a burger out of that. Yeah. And then two, I took a cookie and I put the strawberry ice cream in between the cookie. And you made an ice cream sandwich. It was delicious. I'm not the first person to think of that probably, but it was fantastic. It's standard barbecue fair. It is pretty good food. I, I, it reminds me of like elevated cafeteria style food. I, I do want to shout out both the macaroni and the potato salad, which was surprise potato and egg salad. Both of those were lovely. <sighs> and now, uh, paradise. But we need something to celebrate paradise with us. And that comes from the castaway air bar behind us. I want something in a coconut. Is well, that a possibility? That is a possibility. And to be clear, it's behind you, viewer, where the camera is. It's literally just like right there. So we're gonna, she's already going. Okay, me too, but I'm coming. There's lots of activities you can do here at Serenity Bay. You can rent a bike, you could rent a float, you could rent a tube. My favorite activity is to drink a fruity drink out of a coconut on the beach. Uh, I thought you didn't like fruity drinks. I don't normally, but when on Mickey's Island, you have to have a fruity drink. All right, fair enough. Mm. Ooh, that is sweet. What'd you get? I got the conch cooler. Mm. That is a frozen, sweet, coconutty beverage, rum-based. As one might guess on an island. Mine is actually not frozen, nor rum-based, surprise. It is the Castaway Mule, Caribbean Mule, Pineapple mule. Pineapple mule. It's a mule of some kind. It is fresh muddled fruits, which they did muddle right in front of my eyeballs. Um, it's supposed to be Ciroc pineapple, but I asked for just regular vodka, so they put Tito's in it instead, and then topped with ginger beer. So it's light and refreshing, but not too sweet. And now, we take to the beach and enjoy. Goodbye. Well, I bet yeah, you're gonna stay here, and then we're gonna go to the beach. Cause water, camera. Yeah, not it. a good, not good. Two hours later. Spent a lovely few hours on Serenity Bay. Did some shopping. Look how cute the bag is. That's a good tip. If you just want a souvenir, the bags are like a dollar or two dollars, depending on which side you get, and you could just buy the bag. 
And with a lovely day had here on Castaway Key, we are headed back to the ship uh, because I, I don't know about you, but I'd really like to enjoy the rainforest room. Yes, we got the rainforest room package, talked about it in our day two video, but it's this lovely relaxing spa area in Senses. And then we've got another tasting class to enjoy. Oh yeah! Our favorite bartender yesterday said he was doing another one today, so we signed up for that. And then we have a special dinner tonight and it's pirate site. So many things are happening. So many activities. There's so much more room for activities. Well, we had a wonderful moment of luxury at the rainforest room and then ordered some chicken tenders via room service to our room for a solid base layer because we are headed to our tequila tasting class. I also have to note, we got a Mickey's premium, which I haven't had one in a while and they are so good. Why are they so good? It's the chocolate and the general shape, I think. I think it's the shape. It makes it magic, because it's literally just vanilla ice cream with a little chocolate, but fantastic. But yes, as Alan said, we are headed to a tequila and margarita tasting class at the Keys Lounge. Our wonderful cast member who did our mixology class yesterday was also hosting this one, so we were able to sign up. It was a $45 fee, but in the past, these have been a great way to learn about different kinds of cocktails, and they've been really fun. Plus, you get a sample of a few things, so why not? So you just uh, upscaling our techniques because you don't want to sell all the uh, bottles with that. Some of the bottles are going to be the very different, like a long one, a short one, but it's just upscaling technique. But in the Mexico, in the Jalisco, they have not approved this one because it's against the law. When you get the all the okiness, all the pitiness, it's coming from the gum. And they use more than 30 pieces of the agaves. But look at how pretty the island is because we haven't left yet. It's been like an additional hour. Yeah, behind and the a half. behind the scenes, the captain came on while we were getting ready, and he was like, "Hey, there's a situation on board that requires the local authorities. It uh -huh. won't impact the activities for the night, but we aren't going to leave when we said we would." So here we are. I'm, here we be. I've been speculating wildly. <laughs> And when I tell you that each story is more wild than the last, it's gotten crazy. I'm sure it's just like someone tried to sneak something on that they shouldn't maybe, or like... You mean to tell me it's not... fugitive? Somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think someone's bringing on illicit... Uh-uh. ...substances? Do you think someone on board had illicit substances? You know, we're just gonna wait this out. Do you think someone was doing illicit, illicit substances on the beach and they got caught and now the local authorities have to get caught? Uh, we hope to leave soon. Do you think that it was an illegal street racing ring a la Fast and the Furious? You mean on the 5K track? Yeah, I saw him earlier. Do you think someone's trying to smuggle on like a stingray or something onto the onto the ship? Yes, you earlier. You tried to catch one. I pet it. I didn't try to catch it. I wasn't going to take it from. You toe. literally said, "I'm going to try to catch no, a stingray." No, I said I was going to try and pet it. And she said, "If you can catch it, you can pet it." And, and then I you said, "Oh, I'm going to catch it." And then I pet it, but I wouldn't take it from a toe. But do you think someone else did? Yeah, that's super easy to do. Could be anything. Well, we just finished our tequila tasting. Not a small amount of tequila is offered, for the record. But what that means is you certainly get your money's worth while you're there. This class was $45 a person, and like other drink tastings, I think they're worth it. I think they're really fun if you are 21 and are up and consume alcohol and want to learn more about tequila or mixology or martinis or whatever the class is. I think they're really fun. It was a great time. and. Like we said earlier, the uh, cast member who led this class also led our previous mixology class, and we also went and visited him at the bar uh, yesterday evening. But he's just great, and it's fun to learn and find out new things, and it was a 
fantastic experience. The cast member really made this one because he you can tell he's super passionate about what he's talking about. He's really excited to educate you on the different types of tequilas and mezcals and cocktails in general. Um, so that passion kind of seeps through and then you get to try some things along the way. So if you like to drink alcohol, I recommend these classes. I think they're kind of a hidden gem aboard the Disney Cruise Line. Absolutely. Also, and I think this is clear, if you want to learn something new and mm -hmm. maybe try something new. Now I can't sit here and guarantee that uh, your experience would be like ours with a cast member who likes to experiment, but regardless, you're getting out of your comfort zone and trying something new, and that's worth doing. And what's really fun is both classes we've taken with him so far, he said, hey, this is a drink that I made up. It's a cocktail I experimented with, and I think it tastes really good, so why don't you try it? And that's a blast. <sighs> okay, well, the only thing I guess that's left is to go get ready for Paolo. Yes, we are doing Paolo dinner tonight. It is pirate night, which means that every restaurant serves the same thing. And it's good, but it's not amazing. And why not go to the exclusive adult dining, which you've never been to Paolo for dinner. No, not a singular time. Been to brunch twice, but never dinner. So we're gonna go get ready for that and we'll see you at Paolo. Ciao from Paolo. Good evening. This is the adults only restaurant aboard the Disney Cruise Line. It's an Italian restaurant. We've done brunch on the other ships, but we're going to do dinner tonight. We're about to enjoy some delicious pastas and pizzas and wine and all the good things. And as such, we're going to take some more meticulous notes and we will see you at the end of dinner. Bye. If you do not leave Palo feeling like you need a wheelbarrow. We're about to pop, really. To carry you home. Yeah. Did you even really go to Palo? I would say no. Yeah. I would say nay. Fantastic. <sighs> the service, divine. Shout out to our server Gennaro. He oh, is incredible yeah. from Italy. Gave A us prince. so many recommendations, all of which we ate. So, so delicious. <sighs> As always, we took copious notes, which you'll see in just a minute, but Palo is truly such a wonderful and elevated dining experience. If you are adults on the Disney cruise and you're looking for a nice meal, a celebratory meal, cannot recommend it enough. I do think I like brunch slightly more than dinner. Oh. Interesting. This is my first dinner at Palo, mm. and I have to say this blew it out of the water for me just because I think the dishes were so uniquely different. I, I guess it was just, they were so far from what I was expecting. Yeah, just the chicken parm, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's fair. I have not taken into account the chicken parm factor. Right, right. So it's delicious though. Fresh ingredients, phenomenal service, beautiful setting. Yeah. And now we must take our stuffed bellies to get ready for pirate night real quick. We gotta go pirate up. And while we do that, please enjoy the Pella review. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. After walking us through the menu, our server Gennaro gave us a lot of really cool information about the restaurant itself. In fact, Polo means pole, which refers to the poles where gondolas are tied to in Venice. And you see those poles represented throughout the restaurant, as well as gondola lanterns placed throughout the restaurant as well. In fact, the Disney magic was built in Italy, and you'll see a lot of that faithful architectural representation throughout this restaurant. Let's start by taking a look at the Palo dinner menu. Now, I will say it's a little bit different than brunch, which is $45, all you care to enjoy. At dinner, there is a $45 option. You can pick one out of each of these four courses for a prefix four course meal, or you can order anything off the rest of the menu a la carte. You can mix and match, you can do the prefix and then add more things, but we opted to just choose some a la carte dishes. As far as the options, you start with your antipasti, salate, and zuppa. You've got things like a baby arugula salad, calamari, a bean soup, caprese. Moving into the pastas and the famous palo pizzas, the butternut squash ravioli is delicious and very popular. They also have a seafood pasta with grilled lobster and, of course, a couple of their famous pizzas. You're going to see more of those in a moment. Then we move into our main course, which is a variety of proteins, including salmon, scallops, tuna, chicken, asabuco. They have a couple of vegetarian options as well. And then finally, we have the bigger cuts of meat, your lambs, your steaks, a variety of sauces and sides that can go on those from spinach to pasta to potatoes. They have it all. Started our meal off with an Italian Chianti. We used the wine package we mentioned in the first Disney Magic video for that. And then our server brought us a complimentary amuse-bouche. This was a deep fried gnocchi with mushroom sauce and aged Parmesan on top. This was incredible. I wish I could eat a plate of a thousand of these. I love mushrooms and it had that strong mushroom flavor. The gnocchi was cooked perfectly, plus the nutty cheese, a perfect way to start the meal. Next up was the bread service, which included a variety of different offerings from breadsticks to crispy Parmesan crusted bread to focaccia. 
and I was partial to a Parmesan crisp, and let me just say, the variety here is fantastic, uh, and I'm never going to turn down bread. Next up, we had the Fritto de Calamari e Gamberi. Okay, Giada. <laughs> <laughs> which is deep fried shrimp and calamari with a lemon garlic mayonnaise and marinara dipping sauce. And I have to tell you, this calamari was perfect. Not very chewy, lightly breaded, and the marinara was house-made, not too acidic, but a perfect compliment. I think you're missing the star of the show here, which was the lemon garlic aioli. I want to put that on everything. It was divine. For our salad, we chose the baby arugula at the recommendation of Gennaro. It's made with virgin olive oil, white balsamic vinegar, and 56-month-aged Parmesan Reggiano cheese. It was phenomenal. This is a perfect example of simple deliciousness. The cheese was amazing, and uh, Gennaro made sure to point out that they use special white grapes when making the white vinegar sauce, which until this moment, I never realized that vinegar was made out of grapes. Even though I know it's bad wine, and I know wine's made out of grapes, I just never put those things together. Okay, yeah. Anyway, it was delicious. I'm going to try to make this at home, except for I don't have 50 cents month old Parmesan. <laughs> For our pasta, we got the pacari, which is lamb ragu with thyme and ricotta salata. And I know what you're all thinking. Why not the butternut squash? Well, that's because of my allergy, where we're not able to get that pasta, which is a bummer. But let me tell you, the lamb was incredible. And I learned a fun fact about ricotta. It means cooked twice or cooked again, which is really cool to learn from Gennaro. Uh, and the lamb pasta was incredible. The red sauce was lightly sweet, but it's still incredibly rich. The ground lamb gave a great heartiness to the dish and the texture was just a little bit springy on the pasta. It was a perfect al dente, and I just have to say, this dish was incredible. I, I loved every second. And of course, we had to get some of Paolo's famous pizza. We opted for the Bianca Ricotta, mushrooms, arugula, and truffle oil pizza. And y'all, I'm not being dramatic when I say this may be the best pizza I've ever had. I don't know how they nailed the crust so perfectly all of the time, especially when dealing with the moisture at sea, but it is light, it is crispy, it is flawless. Tons of that incredibly rich and nutty ricotta cheese, as well as some Parmesan on top. Love the mushroomy flavor, and of course, that slight essence of the truffle oil. Absolute perfection. I want to go on another cruise just to eat this pizza. I'm not being dramatic. Being a little dramatic. <laughs> and believe it or not, our main course had not yet arrived. We opted for the six ounce grilled choice Angus beef tenderloin steak, decided to split that. My favorite thing about it, you could add extra sauces. So we went for the pink peppercorn, the truffle jus, and the gorgonzola. On the sides, we added the cavatappi pasta, as well as the grilled asparagus at the recommendation of Gennaro. Listen to your servers, people. First up, the steak. Grilled to medium rare perfection. It had a nice char on the outside. It was moist, it was delicious, and it was elevated even more when you added the different sauces. My personal favorite, surprisingly, the truffle jus. I thought it would be the gorgonzola, which was rich and creamy and delicious, and I loved it, but the truffle jus was a little bit lighter, and it added just that essence of truffle. Amazing. My favorite was the pink peppercorn. Listen, the steak was so very rich and meaty, but the pink peppercorn added a little bit of brightness and spiciness to it that really counteracted and elevated that dish. It was so good. What we're saying is order a steak just to get a bunch of sauces. As far as the side goes, the cavitappi pasta is essentially their version of mac and cheese. It's got Parmesan, tons of buttered breadcrumbs on top. It's of course delicious. It's perfectly cooked pasta with tons of cheese, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't dip a few of my noodles in that gorgonzola sauce. Now, while this was amazing, I don't know that I would order this again, considering I was already really full, and it wasn't as unique as some of the other dishes. And as far as the grilled asparagus goes, it was coated and cooked in virgin olive oil, ricotta salata, and lemon. And I have to say, I never thought that I would gush about asparagus, but this was really good. It still had body and crunch without being super mushy like overcooked asparagus is, and the lemon added a little bit of citrusy brightness to it. I enjoyed it. Somehow we still had room for dessert. Well, that's because dessert is a different part of the stomach. That seems scientifically true. We'll go with that. I opted for the limoncello tart, which I've had before. It's a very creamy limoncello tart, as the name would suggest. It comes with a bit of meringue and fresh fruit. It is lovely. It is nice and bright and tart. Perfect dessert, not too rich to end such a delicious meal. Now I'm going to give you a pro tip. If your server asks you if you want a souffle at the start of your meal, just say yes, because I got the chocolate souffle with a vanilla bean gelato and vanilla and chocolate sauce. And when I tell you it was life-changing, it was. It was so deliciously rich with deep chocolate flavor that was counterbalanced with the beautiful vanilla. I literally am salivating right now thinking about it. I, it was just perhaps the best dessert I've ever had, period. 
I think my highlight for the souffle though, one, it had a cute little 25th anniversary chocolate on it. And two, I love when the server says, can I prepare it for you? And they cut a little hole in the souffle and pour the warm chocolate sauce. I mean, it is like divine. It is so decadent. Get this. Just do it. The last night he's it be pirate night. You can tell because we have cool pirate bandanas on. Mine's which... on my arm, which you can't see, but it's there. Hey, you know what? Thank you, Disney Magic. The Disney Wish did not provide us these cool bandanas, and I miss them. So thank you to the Disney Magic. Pirate Night is a Disney Cruise Line tradition. One night during your cruise, they typically make everything pirate. From the music you hear on board, the characters have pirate outfits, there's character entertainment. Had we not chosen to go to Palo tonight, the menu would have been Pirate Night at dinner. And now we are headed up to the top deck to watch the Pirate Night fireworks. Savvy? We have asked. Hey, Alan. Yes? If you were a pirate, would, what would be your thing? Like, would you have a peg leg or a hook hand or like a parrot? Or... I'd have the rum. You'd have the rum. Mm-hmm. Our... So when you ask why it's always gone, it's just me. You are, you are why the rum is gone? Uh-huh. I would be, I would have a parrot. Oh, you'd have a parrot? Yeah. Oh, it's so loud! ears on the whole time or no but i forgot i brought them because they're my favorite they're pirates of the caribbean ears and i forgot i had them in the post palo coma so i just wanted to put them on for at least part of the video okay nice that is an epic show oh my gosh mickey zip lighting in highlight mickey crushing it on the dance floor yeah all the characters crushed on the dance floor oh and then fireworks to the pirates of the caribbean score which is probably my favorite movie score of all time. Listen, Hans Zimmer and Klaus Badelt, incredible. Rushed. So cool to see fireworks at sea. And don't worry, Disney developed some magic fireworks that don't harm the ocean, because of course they did. But it's so cool. It's such a unique Disney Cruise Line experience to watch fireworks. And, and Pirates Night fireworks are just the best. The music, the show, the characters, it's so fun. Now, if you want a good spot to stand to see the fireworks, Ask a cast member. They're gonna know better than anybody. And you are going to have to make a choice if you wanna have a good view of the stage show or a good view of the fireworks. It's really tough to get both in one just because of how they're located. So we wanted to see fireworks. We asked the cruise director last night where to stand when we saw him on the deck and he said deck 10 starboard side would be an unobstructed view of the fireworks in the sky. So we stood there tonight as well. It was an amazing view, but as Alan said, we were a little bit further from the stage, which was fine by me because we ended up getting the perfect view of Mickey. Yeah, that was crazy. I can't believe Mickey did that. He's so talented. Like how does He's one mouse such a talented have mouse. that much talent? He's very skilled. Anyway, 
I think that brings our evening to a close. Another wonderful day aboard the Disney Magic. What was your highlight? Paolo. Mm, Paolo was incredible. I've never, again, that was my first time at Paolo dinner. Uh, I don't know what my expectations were, but I don't think anything I could have set would have uh, been close enough. It was just, it blew everything out of the water. What about you? I mean, Castaway Cake. We were at Castaway Key today. I'd say feeding the stingrays. That was a new experience. I'd never done that before. Someone who loves marine life, it was really fun to get up close and personal with these beautiful creatures. So another wonderful day in the books. We've got one more day aboard the Disney Magic. Tomorrow's our day at sea. We've got Palo Brunch, first time at Lumiere's for dinner, more shows, characters, so come back. But in the meantime, tonight we're gonna change into comfies and go see the new Little Mermaid, which is playing in the theater. I'm so excited. A little scared. That's fair. But anyway, folks, please be sure to like, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and join us on Discord for the conversations. Links are all down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been a vast mateys. It's been magical. Arr. Arr, mate. I wonder what be our power friend this evening. I. Arr. Monkey. And we got pirate blooms. We got our booty. Avast mates, we've got the booty!